Hey, this is Ken Finnan from Capital Advantage Tutoring. And today we're going to talk about bond taxation, specifically accretion and amortization. So let's get going. So when you buy a bond, if you buy it at par, then none of this applies. But if you buy it either below or above par, the IRS kind of wants you to do some stuff. So the IRS is not going to always wait till the end to tax you. So let's not talk about the interest. That doesn't matter. If it's, you know, muni, bond, treasury, or corporate, the interest is taxable the way it is. But we're talking about if you buy it at a discount or a premium, the IRS is going to make you adjust what you do. So if you buy it at a discount, you're accreting. But you're moving up, which you get to. And if you're buying it at a premium, it's amortization which we'll get to also. So those are the two things, accretion for discounts, amortization for premiums. So if I have a heart attack now and die and don't finish it, at least I have that. So as far as accretion goes, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't have to. The IRS has some rules. They're pretty simple. If you buy an OID, what the hell is an OID? An OID is a zero coupon bond, a bond you buy at a discount. If you're buying it, at, it's originally issued at a discount. You didn't buy it at a discount because rates went up. You bought it at a discount because that's how it's issued. If it's an OID, you must accrete. There you go, you have to, everyone has to accrete. If you buy the bond at a discount because rates went up and you bought, it was a regular par value bond and it dropped in price because rates went up, then you don't have to accrete. You get to choose, you don't have to or not. And normally you wouldn't because when you accrete, you have to pay taxes on that money right then. So you wait, you wait till you sell it. Now on the premium side, if it's a muni, you must amortize. If it's a corporate or treasury, you don't. So I'm going to repeat this. If it's a discount bond that's issued at a discount, meaning a zero coupon slash OID, you must accrete. If you bought it at a discount because rates went up and it just dropped in price, you don't have to accrete. You can wait till later. If you buy it at a premium, then you only have to amortize if it's a muni. Corporates and treasuries do not have to amortize. So we'll do this again. OID you must accrete and muni premiums you must amortize. Oh, that's it. Everything else is you get to choose. Okay, let's talk about the actual math behind accretion. So if you buy a discount bond, OID specifically, then the IRS will require you, require you to accrete the bond. So you have to accrete the bond, which means the IRS wants to tax you on the little increments going up. So they're going to tax you. Luckily, if it's a muni, since it's considered interest income, you won't have to pay taxes on it. But if it's a corporate, you'll have to pay federal and local. And if it's a treasury, you'll pay federal. But let's do the math here. So we bought an IBM zero bond maturing in 2031. Right now it's 2021. So we're going to go with that. So that means it's 10 years to maturity. We bought it at 750. They could have said 75, whatever. Since we bought it at 750, we bought it at 250 below par. So we're going to do, so the distance to par is 250. So we're going to go 250 divided by how many years to maturity. In this case, it's 10. That's going to give us 25 bucks. So that means we're going to increase, we're going to increase the dollars here to make it easier. That means we're going to accrete $25 every year. So that means if we hold it all the way to maturity, we've accreted every year all the way up to, to par. So if you hold it to maturity, you have no capital gain or loss because you've been accreting. So let's do it. So after one year, you bought the bond at 750. So after one year, it's 750. After one year, it becomes add 25. We'll just say plus 25. That means 775. So that's the new cost basis. Okay. So if we have to two years, it's going to be 800, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So that's what we're doing. We're increasing our cost basis, not your proceeds, your cost basis. And remember, since it's a zero, you have to do it. If it's a secondary market discount, you don't have to do it. Now, sometimes it'll ask the question, same scenario, we'll change it up a little bit. Sometimes, oh, why did I do that? I shouldn't have done that. Okay, so let me just erase some of it. So we have this and they go, three years later, sold at 875. Okay, we'll just say that. So we have to find out, they might say, what's the gain? What's the capital gain? I could spell that would be awesome. Capital gain. They might even just say, what's the new cost basis? Let's do both. Okay. Boom. 
So we bought a 750. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do 250 divided by 10 years. That equals 25 bucks a year. We got that. Now, after three, so let's see, three years later, so we're going to do three times 25. So we're going to add 75, not equals. If I could press plus, that would be great. Why do I keep doing that? That's great. You guys think I'm an idiot now. I already am. We already know I'm an idiot. Plus 750, that's going to equal 825. That's my new cost basis. So my cost basis is now 825. That's my cost basis. Boom, that's the one answer. The other one is a capital gain. VB, what the hell is VB? We don't know what VB is, but we know what cost basis is. That's what happens when you type fast and you're an idiot. So now, 825 is my cost basis. Now, where did I say I sold it? I sold the bond at 875 because that's my proceeds. So I made a $50 cap gain. That's how you do that. Not so bad, right? That's accretion. So it doesn't matter. It's very easy. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the distance from par, par minus the market price, divide it, divide that by the number of years to maturity, and then add that for every year. That's all I'm doing. 775. It was 775, 800, 825. That's the third year. 825 is a cost basis. Whatever we sell it for above that is a capital gain. If we happen to have sold the bond, let's say instead we sold the bond, let's say we sold it at, sold it at, I'll make it up, 810. Boy, typing is not my friend today. Sold it at 810. Well, then technically, if we sell it at 810, we have a $15 loss. That is so weird, right? So think about it. We have a $15 loss, even though we sold it for more than, we sold it for more than we bought it for because it's accreting, because the IRS makes us accrete it. Now, here's the thing. Here's the city part. Every year that you accrete this, the IRS is going to tax you on that 25 bucks, okay? If it's a muni, we don't care because it's considered interest income on in this case, so we don't have to worry about it. But if it's if it's a corporate or treasury, we're going to have to pay taxes on that 25 bucks. So that's called phantom income because you're paying taxes on money you're not getting until the end because the IRS doesn't want to wait till 2031 to charge you. They want it now. They want it up front because they're the evil empire. Sorry, they're going to come after me, but that they're the evil empire. OK, so again, you're going to create every year and you're going to have to pay taxes on that. Maybe if it's a muni, you don't because that's considered interest income. But if it's a corporate or a treasury, you do, and it's taxes, ordinary income. Boom. Hey, before we get on to the next section, please, if you haven't hit like it, hit the little button for me. That'd be great. Also, I'm doing memberships now. And what I'm going to start doing is put, even though I do them on the weekends, most of the time I push videos out in the middle of the week. So, so when people are watching, I'm going to start pushing out videos early on the weekends or when I do them to the members first. And I'm going to do a lot more exams. I'm going to do 63, 7 SIE exams. I'm going to do more of that on my membership thing. And those are going to be where they are. I'm still doing stuff for the free stuff. Don't worry about that. But I'm going to start doing more stuff for the members to welcome them by throwing a little cash my way. We got this. Okay, so we'll try a new one. We buy one New York City 8s. What the hell is 8S? That's their slang for coupon. That's the 8s, the 8 percenters. 8 percent of 2041. That means it's maturing in 2041. We bought it at 120, which is 120% of par which is 1200 which means it's a premium because it's more than par. And since I put New York City on there, we can know it's a muni. They will normally make it pretty clear. So this is the 8% of 2041. We bought at 120 which is 1200 So since it's a muni, we what? Yes, right. We must amortize. So we're going to amortize. So let's do this. So it's a muni. We're going to do it's 1200 minus 1000 I know we kind of did that before, the other one, but why not? That's going to equal 200 bucks. So we have $200 in premium. So we're going to take the 200 just like the other one and divide it by the years to maturity. So this time it's 20 years. So I'm going to take the handy dandy calculator and do this. So let's take the handy dandy calculator and do 200 divided by 20. 200 divided by 20. Never do shit in your head. That's going to equal 10 bucks a year that you're reducing. Remember, you're always going toward par. So you're going to reduce your um, your cost basis every year. So we bought it at 120, which is 1200. And after one year, it's going to be 1190. After two years, it's going to be 1180. After three years, it's 1170. On and on and on, all the way down to par. And guess what? 
If you hold dividends at maturity, you have no capital gain or loss because you amortized all the way down to par. Good. Now let's do the same thing. They usually won't do it this way. They don't go that heavy. They just want to know how to do it. Well, let's say same situation, but let's say we sold it. We'll go three years later at 1190 or 119. Okay. Sold it three years later at 119. I'll put later in there. So it looks good. So what do you do? Okay. We bought it at 1200. Three years is $30. So our new cost basis is 1170. It's not proceeds, it's cost basis. And then we sold it at 1190. So that means it's going to be a $20 capital gain. Isn't that weird that I bought the bond for 1200 and I sold it for 1190 and I have a $20 cap gain. The only the IRS can come up with something this evil. So that's where we are. That's amortization. And the other one was accretion. So remember accretion is on the discounts. Amortization is on the premiums. You may get one or two questions on this. Not that big a deal. That's why I'm not making it a really long video because then you'll just, it's a snooze fest. If somebody spends more than 30 minutes on a video on this, you've taken way too goddamn long. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. That's a quick one, quick and easy. Accretion and amortization, some of the rules and how to do it. It is not harder than that on the test. I don't care if Kaplan, SDC, Pest Perfect, or training consultants are achievable. Any of them ask the questions that's harder than that, not going to be there. It's going to be very simple, very straightforward. They want to know what the cost basis is or what the cap gain is, depending on when you buy or sell it. Or they just say, do you have to? So how do we remember that? If it's a mute, if it's a discount bond, a zero coupon, you must agree. If it's a secondary market discount, you don't have to. And the premium side, only munis have to amortize. The corporates and treasuries don't. So guys, if you like what I'm doing, please hit like, subscribe, and share. And share this shit around. Send it to your college buddies. You're just graduating, crying about taking these tests. I will help them. Join my lives on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And have a great day.